Nu ska du titta på vattnets strömning i jorden. På ett fenomen- We will now look at a phenomenon for water flow in soil called macropore flow. In some soils there are large interconnected pores caused by roots that have decayed or by the activity of animals such as earthworms. The question is now to which degree such pores can conduct water. In unsaturated soils, their contribution is uncertain. Under some conditions, they can be very efficient, but under other, they may not contribute at all to the water flow. In the saturated zone, on the other hand, if there are continuous pore systems, they will conduct water very efficiently. This is important for the transport of pollutants with soil water and groundwater. Here I have an example, perhaps slightly exaggerated. It's a porous stone from some building material that is permeable to water. I have drilled a hole right through the stone and in one end I have attached a tube. Let's see if water flows through the hole. At the beginning the stone is dry. I give some rainfall to the hole, rather much. No water flows out from the other end of the hole. If I increase the water flow very much, I think I can get some outflow. Om jag ökar vattenflödet jättemycket kan jag få ut lite vatten tror jag. Där kommer det. There it comes. But now I have given an extremely high flow. With a normal small flow, no water is coming out. The water is sucked from the pore walls to the dry stone around the pore. And although the pore is big, it doesn't contact water. Water preferred to flow through the main soil. Now when the stone is wet, a smaller inflow is needed to make water flow through the macropore. I increase a little and it flows through the pore. But still, with a moderate flow, which is very high as compared to rainfall. Water cannot flow through the big pore, since it doesn't contain water under these pressures. So, can not water flow through the big pore? If I increase a little, the water is flowing through the pore. Only water-filled pores can conduct water. This may sound obvious, but it's important to consider when it comes to flow in the unsaturated zone. Big pores are not containing water when the pressure is somewhat negative. Then water prefers to flow through the surrounding soil. With this stone, I will show how an extremely big pore affects the water flow in the unsaturated zone. We can imagine this as a nest of sand martin, built in the walls of a sand pit. The groundwater table is deep below. Now it's raining on the ground above the nest. A lot of water can infiltrate into this initially dry stone. I continue the rainfall with high intensity right above the nest. But there is no dripping from the ceiling. After a while, water is dripping from the bottom of the stone. If the flow is not too big, water flows around the large pore. The sand martins are protected from dripping ceilings.